Kyle Mohan Racing. We're hanging out in Mazda Tricks, and I have right here in front of me a mocked up Renesis hybrid motor. And if you're not familiar with that, that would be a Renesis motor, the RX-8 motor, with peripheral exhaust. So additional exhaust, your factory intake, your factory exhaust, and then the two additional ports. Now, we do this with GSLSE housings. These are factory Mazda RX-7 housings from 1984, 85. There are some other generations and years, uh, truck housings, 13D housings that have water O-rings in the rotor housing that would be applicable, but the GSLSE housings are still available from Mazda Tricks, from Mazda, and basically make this project a doable or off the shelf component project. And that's one of the biggest questions I get about these builds about this project is, where do you get the components? What makes them special? What is unique to this build? And that's starting off right there. RX-8 side plates do not have water O-ring grooves. They went back to the earlier style in the rotor housings with water O-ring grooves in those rotor housings. And in this case, that allowed us to come up with this idea at Mazda Tricks to put those GSLSE rotor housings in there because, hey, they would bolt right in and that would give us a five or six port exhaust if you consider this center is divided and actually gives it four OEM ports, division in the center, and two peripheral style ports via the additional exhaust. So a six port exhaust, multi-port exhaust, call it what you want. We call them hybrid builds. Really, it's a combination of old school rotor housings with almost everything else still remaining RX-8, allowing you to equalize exhaust and intake flow. I get people asking about, hey, I want to semi-peripheral this. To me, that seems like too much air. Um, hey, if anybody's doing it out there, I'm, I'm sure it's gonna make a lot of horsepower via turbocharging, but the Mazda Tricks principle was to alleviate some of the extra exhaust that, that couldn't get out of this motor because it's a pretty well-known issue. Um, heat stagnates, you get exhaust port shrinkage, and one of the fail points to Mazda RX-8 motors is exhaust heat buildup, carbon buildup, and shrinkage in these areas. By adding this extra exhaust flow, if you just visualize what intake flow is available, you can see it's a lot more equalized intake versus exhaust, and that was our principle. Yes, it worked. One of our previous videos, we actually have the dyno chart, um, some of the information about it. The Vargas brothers now own our intake and turbocharging system from our original build. I think they're putting it together. And uh, if you've been following KMR and Mazda Tricks, we recently came out with this very cool exhaust flange. Sorry, I'm doing this one-handed that bolts right up and allows you to create your own uh, naturally aspirated or turbo exhaust manifold for these builds. We went with stainless, thick, CNC cut, traditional two inch exhaust runner size. And on the back side, you can actually see it's profiled specifically for flow and port matching, which I don't think a lot of the other people who are making these flanges have done it. You want it thick, you don't want it to warp. Rotaries make a lot of exhaust heat. You want it stainless, you want quality. Slides right on. Another one of the key things about these builds that uh, people have been talking about and asking about is rotor choice. We went with Mazda RX-8 factory rotors, but obviously we did cut the apex seal grooves for traditional RX-7 height apex seals. Anytime you're using an RX-8 rotor and it needs to pass over a traditional exhaust port, you would want traditional RX-7 apex seal height. Um, via our research, our testing, it seemed like RX-8 apex seals under heat and extreme use just don't have the beam strength to go over a peripheral exhaust port and it leads to excessive wear, um, potentially pre premature failure of the motor. So. Two of your big factors are don't try to reinvent the rotor housing, just get GSLSE rotor housings, um, and obviously cut those apex seal grooves for OEM RX-7 height apex seal as you're using an RX-7 rotor housing. 
Other than that, you're going to need a standalone fuel management system, upgraded fuel pumps. If you're adding uh, more airflow, you're going to use more fuel. And in our case, we got rid of all of the OEM intake manifolding and went to more of a race style setup, aluminum, doing away with a lot of the valving as well. Obviously, when turbocharging, a lot of that is a lot less necessary. As we started to up the boost, this motor is not studded, but we did eventually go to a fully studded block. We shimmed the oil system, increasing oil pressure, side cut the rotors, and balanced the assembly. All of this was done via Mazda Trix uh, back when I was in the engine department at Mazda Trix, but they were fantastic motors and Mazda Trix ended up winning a few different divisional races with it. I think uh, Moto IQ, we got the West Coast Championship, and I'm pretty sure in NASA we had some class wins as well. Um, also in Time Attack, as the car evolved, um, actually that might have been what we won that class championship in. I don't know. I know the motors won some championships. They were very reliable, very fun, and in the end, the air and exhaust in this configuration, not a semi-peripheral or anything aggressive, just street-ported intake, street-ported exhaust, balanced everything out well and it actually became a very efficient turbocharged package um, rivaling the efficiency of any FD or Cosmo motors out there in flow but when we did this this was still a complicated build RX-8s were new and I don't think there was a lot of modifications with the RX-8s yet so as that chassis has become more viable there is a lot more interest in these builds, and I think it is as viable as doing any other swap into the RX-8. This is not just a direct off-the-shelf component build. Your exhaust manifolds don't exist, your intake doesn't exist, your fuel system needs to be redone, and piggybacking computers and what you do with computers on RX-8s is difficult because they're a CAN system. And then obviously in the US we have our uh, federal smog laws, so obviously this was for a race car that was off-road use. But this is the setup we came up with. That's how it worked. That's a little bit of the Mazda Trix KMR info and insight into these Renesis hybrid builds. You can see very generic assembly. It's just a 13B when you get done with it. Renesis front cover, Renesis oil pan, and uh, if you notice, we've got this really cool first-gen e-production car here in the background, wide body. And this is one of the new acquisitions at Mazda Trix. We'll be doing a tech talk about this in the future. But make sure to follow KMR, subscribe. Any questions, let us know. And we'll put a link to the previous videos about our Renesis hybrids in the comments or description below. It's going to be down there. There you go. KMR. Tech Talks, not a TikTok. We're doing rotary stuff all day, every day.